Moving forward, we are now going to examine something called a partition function. First, we will re-examine the Boltzmann distribution law, which we have already used. Specifically, n2 over n1 is equal to e raised to the power of negative delta e over kb times t. And what this looks at is the relative populations of two energy levels. This expression comes in other forms. For instance, the population of a single energy level, ni, is equal to n0 times e raised to the power of ei divided by the Boltzmann constant times the temperature, where ei is just the energy of a specific energy level. And in this case, we can calculate the total population by taking the sum over ni, where ni, again, is equal to n0 times the sum of e raised to the power of ei divided by the Boltzmann constant divided by temperature. Now, ni over n gives the fraction of the population in energy level i, or the probability of being in state i, and can be expressed as ni over n is equal to e raised to the power of negative ei divided by the Boltzmann constant times the temperature, divided by the sum over i of e raised to the power of negative ei over the Boltzmann constant times temperature. Dividing this expression of one energy level by another energy level returns the originally presented form. The sum term in the Boltzmann distribution law has great theoretical importance and is called the partition function, or Q. It is defined as the sum over i of the exponent of negative ei divided by the Boltzmann constant times the temperature, where e sub i is the energy of state i and the summation extends over all states. One thing to keep in mind is that Q has no units, it's just a number. It tells us the number of accessible states to a particle at a given temperature. For example, at t is equal to zero, only the ground state n0 is accessible, and we set e0 to be equal to zero. Finally, it can be used to calculate various thermodynamic properties. Let's now apply this definition to a three-level system so that we can calculate its partition function. And so what we have in this example is that we have a three-level system where one level is at zero joules, the second level is at 2.0 times 10 to the minus 21 joules, and the third energy level is 8 times 10 to the minus 21 joules. And what we want to do is we want to find the partition function Q at 300 degrees Kelvin. So the first thing that we're going to determine in order to do this is we're just going to just calculate what is Kb times T, what is the Boltzmann factor times this temperature. And so in this case, what we are going to do is multiply the Boltzmann factor, 1.381 times 10 to the minus 23. And we're going to multiply that by 300 Kelvin. And so the units for this are Kelvin, and the Boltzmann factor is joules per Kelvin. And so in the end, in this, this, this multiplication, what we're going to end up with is a value in joules. That number is going to be 4.14 times 10 to the minus 21 joules. So now that we have this, vol this value, this value ends up being the denominator in the exponent for the partition function, or the definition of the partition function. So in general, the definition is Q is equal to the sum over all the states I times, or E raised to the power of negative EI over KBT. And so we just found this denominator, and all we're going to do now is evaluate the sum, where at each value for i, we're going to sub in for the three energies. Written explicitly, this is e to the negative e0 divided by kbt plus e to the negative e1 over kbt plus e to the negative e2 over kbt. And if I substitute in numbers, well, the energy of the zeroth energy level, or of the ground state, is equal to zero. So we can just plug in zero for that. For the first energy level, that's 2.0 times 10 to the minus 21. So e to the negative 2.00 times 10 to the minus 21. This is divided by kbt, which we found to be 4.14 times 10 to the minus 21. To that, I'm going to add e raised to the power of negative 8.00 times 10 to the minus 21, and that I'm going to divide by 4.14 times 10 to the minus 21. And so if I evaluate all of these, e to the power of 0, well, that's equal to 1, plus e raised to the power 
of negative 2 times 10 to the minus 21 divided by 4.14 times 10 to the minus 21. That's equal to 0 0.617. And finally, e raised to the power of negative 8 times 10 to the minus 21 divided by 4.14 times 10 to the minus 21 is equal to 0 0.145. And so that means then the partition function for this system is 1.76. We are now going to examine how partition functions can be used to derive thermodynamic quantities. To do this, we need to understand how the different expressions of energy, translational, rotational, and vibrational, are accounted for. Given that the total energy of a molecule is simply the sum of all the different types of energy that it possesses, then we can just substitute in this sum into the definition of a partition function. Then using the property of exponentials, where the sum can be separated into a product of exponential terms, what we are left with is a product of the three partition functions, where each one represents a type of energy. Let's look at the three types. What we will see is that the expressions that are used to quantify the energy of each type are quantum mechanical in nature. It's alright if you have not taken a quantum mechanics course yet, as I only mention where the energy terms come from for interest's sake. The first type we'll look at is for translation. The particle in a box model is used to derive the energy expression. Substituting this into the Qtrans expression and simplifying it gives 2 pi times m times the Boltzmann constant times t raised to the power of 3 halves times the volume v divided by Planck's constant h raised to the power of 3. One thing to note is that the volume of container v is in liters or in decimeters cubed and m, the mass, is the mass of the molecule. The second type is rotational motion. The rigid rotator is the model used to derive the energy expression. Substituting this into Q rot expression and simplifying it gives 8 times pi squared times the moment of inertia i times the Boltzmann factor times the temperature divided by sigma times Planck's constant h squared. The sigma is something called the symmetry number which is the number of indistinguishable orientations that can be produced by rotations less than or equal to 360 degrees. We include this parameter so that we do not overcount states that are the same. For example, for a homonuclear diatomic molecule, say hydrogen, there are two indistinguishable orientations, being at 180 degrees and 360 degrees, so sigma is equal to 2. For a heteronuclear diatomic molecule, say HF, there is only one indistinguishable orientation, being a full rotation to 360 degrees, so sigma is equal to 1. The third type is vibrational motion. The harmonic oscillator is the model used to derive the energy expression. Substituting this into the partition function and simplifying gives 1 over 1 minus e raised to the power of h nu divided by the Boltzmann constant times t, where nu is the frequency of the vibration. If there are several vibrational modes, as for polyatomic molecules, then take the product of all the partition function values, each with their own frequency nu. Also, a partition function or a vibrational partition function equal to 1 indicates that only the ground state is thermally accessible. This is typical at room temperature.